Hey, this is Jason Roselle, and welcome to Get Inspired, the official podcast and YouTube show that will empower your mind, body, business, social media branding, relationships, and anything that's holding you back from becoming the best version of you. Listen, before I became a TV personality, an author, a celebrity trainer, a life and wellness coach, and the founder of Caliente Fitness, I was broke obese for 20 plus years, full of stretch marks, full of excuses, and most importantly, here's the deal. I was unhappy. I was able to change my life completely, and since then, I've helped thousands do the same. This show is gonna bring you awesome guests, tons of helpful programs that'll aid you, but most importantly, your questions and topics that will make this show your show. My question is this, are you ready to get inspired? Well, get ready, because the show starts now brand new episode of get inspired with jason the podcast and youtube show as you know this show is all about inspiration and today's guest is one beyond inspirational person because not only does he inspire me but thousands each day on abc 10 news he's a sportscaster he's a host but wait there's more he actually was one of my previous reality star co-stars on I Love New York, VH1, of course, and I Love Money season two. We're going to talk about the rocks and Rollins and the downs and the sideways. Today, I bring you before known as Bones. His real name is Kevin John. What's up, Kevin? What's up, Jason? You know, I think that's the best introduction I've ever had to anything. Can you just introduce me for the rest of my life, just wherever I go? You, you could just pop up and introduce me. I, I got you, baby. Look, all you have to do is just holla. Look, <laughs> listen, to- listen. Literally, you can just Venmo me anytime I got you, baby. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But see, the way that my uh, my bank, my checking account, and my savings account is set up. You know, I, I don't know how that's going to work, but I will keep that in mind, brother. But thank you, man. Thank, yeah. Thanks so much for the introduction, man. It, Absolutely. It, 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 it's Go gonna ahead. be hard for me to live up to that introduction. I, you know, it felt like you were introducing Jesus or something, man. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, why? <laughs> well, well, you are an avid uh, believer in God and Jesus. And look, I don't care if anybody, anyone is watching or listening right now. They're like, well, I don't believe in so and so. Look. We all have a right to believe in what we want. We all have a right to pick and vote how we want. My show, we don't talk about religion. We don't talk about politics. We talk about doing you and being you, baby. That's it, right? So well, that, that's one thing I can definitely do. Oh, you, you have done it and you do a great job. So for the audiences, because I don't want to spend too much time today on I'm, I'm focusing on the past because one of the biggest things I tell any of my coaching clients, whether it's in their life, wellness, relationships, or branding, only look into the past to see how far you've come. Don't focus on any things that maybe weren't the best memories, right? The now is the most important thing. You were one of the biggest reality stars in network history, uh, first starting in 2007 in I Love New York VH1, which, uh, of course, for a lot of audiences that maybe are new to the Get Inspired show that never watched me or you on these shows, this was Tiffany Pollard, excuse me, Tiffany Pollard, AKA New York, whereas essentially it was the bachelorette, right? And 20 bachelors out of thousands across the country got selected. You and I were one of the bachelors to compete for the love of this uh, yo- uh, lo- lovely young lady. We'll leave it at that, right? Yeah, definitely lovely. You know, we'll, we'll say she was a, a unique, one of a kind. And, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and say this, you know, I think she's an amazing, awesome person. And I, you know, obviously she turned out to be gold for VH1. What got you to where you are today? And meaning did, did VH1 fame help you become this awesome, amazing ABC 10 host and sports uh, sportscaster. Well, thank you for those superlatives there to describe me. Uh, you know, you're just on the money. If I ever die, Jason, you have to get my eulogy. Okay. You, you have to go up there and get my eulogy. Just 100. putting that out there. I got um, you. Not that I plan on dying anytime soon, but yeah, to, to what you said, as far as what got me to where I'm at today, 100% drive, determination, will, tenacity, ambition, you know, people have this misperception that if you go on national TV, 
whether it reality TV, whatever it may be, if you have this massive platform where you're seen by millions of people, then everything in life just comes to you. Like basically right when you get off the show, the red carpet just rolls out and everyone is just trying to get you to do shows, to do movies and all that other stuff. I don't know about your experience, but that sure as hell did not happen to me. <laughs> once I once I got off of the uh, the shows, there was no red carpet. Uh, there was an there was asphalt on the street. That was about it. Yep. But you know, people have this misperception that you know you come off and your life is made and everything just happens for you. And Jason, that couldn't be further from the truth. I had to fight, claw, and 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 struggle to get to where I'm at today. That, that, that's a great thing that you just brought up because a lot of a lot of clients that I work with on a weekly basis and uh, one of the biggest triggers they have or uh, should I say negative thoughts that take over is, hey, Jason, what do I do in a situation where, for example, say they're manifesting or say they're praying or journaling in the morning? They have these great ideas. They have these passions. They have these goals, just like you did and just like I have. And they ask yourself, well, what do you do in a situation where you want to, example, become a nationally syndicated broadcaster, a host, just like you are? What happens when the negative thoughts come in saying you're not good enough, Kevin? You're not good looking enough, Kevin. You are not talented enough, Kevin. What do you do or what did you do to just to conquer those fears? Because I know you had them. We all do. Of course, we all have self-doubt. We all have insecurities. We all have things, or shall I say haters, that prevent us from reaching our fullest potential. What did I do, Jason? I had to dig deep into myself and know my own worth. And I think at the end of the day, you have to know your own value and worth. Don't let this person validate your value and worth. Don't let this company validate your value and worth. Don't let anything, don't let your amount of followers on social media validate your value or worth. And I understand it's easy to get caught up in all of those things because in the world that we live in, I think everyone is seeking validation, whether it's from people, whether it's from followers, whether it's from likes. But at the end of the day, you have to know what you bring to the table. You have to know in your heart that Jason Rizal is the greatest fitness, health, instructor, brand, ambassador, whatever it is, you have to know in your heart that you would do that exceedingly uh, and abundantly better than anyone else. And I think at the end of the day, Jason, I went through a lot of that, especially when I started off, uh, when I became a broadcaster. Dude, I was rejected from, as you know, the DMA, that's the amount of markets throughout our nation. There's about 210, 218 maybe now markets. I applied to each and every one of those when I was trying to get my first job in broadcasting. I got denied by around 99.6% of them. So pretty much that's like all but two. So, you know, you, but I knew deep down, this is what I wanted. And I knew that I wasn't going to let anybody or anything take that away from me. So to answer your question, you know, how do you fight through adversity, opposition, uh, self-doubt? Because that's stuff that we all have. Uh, you know, everyone is, you know, no one is uh, immune to, not immune to that. So everybody, you know, everyone encounters those things. I think at the end of the day, just, just knowing, you know, there's this quote that I like, it's called trust your dopeness. And I think at the end of the day, if everyone trusted their dopeness, they wouldn't allow those kind of thoughts to linger in their head and they would truly be able to manifest whatever it is that they truly want to do in their, in their heart. A hundred percent. And I think a lot of that, you know, where a lot of people lack, uh, it, it comes down to not only keep on knocking on the doors until they open, uh, the discipline and consistency, right? A lot of people may be watching or listening right now and saying, well, that's awesome. You know, like, hey, I believe in myself too, Kevin. Um, and I, I'm going to go for it. But what, what do you say to someone and, I, and I'm giving you questions because this is advice that I give people because at the end of the day, you're my guest and I want to hear your take. What do you say to someone that lacks that ambition to say, and mind you, anyone can apply this to anything, whether it's weight loss, weight gain, uh, bettering their relationship with their partner, their foods, right? Their branding, their social media marketing. What if they lack that consistency, persistency, or just the mere fact of, okay, I got to wake up at 5 a.m., right? Because you wake up really early to do what you do, 
right? Sometimes even earlier. And I have to, I have to get ready and I got to do this. I got to show up. What do you say to say a mom that has three kids that she's a stay at home mom, but she wants to become a news journalist one day, or maybe a fitness coach, but she's like, ah, I don't need, I don't want to really dress up. I'm at home. Who do I have to impress? Why should I put on makeup? What do you tell these people to get them going and to actually do it? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. The one thing that motivated me and gave me that passion and desire to get up early, continue working towards it was being broke. You know, there's nothing <laughs> like living in a studio apartment with, you know, less than a hundred dollars to your day and realizing, okay, I don't want to wake up in these conditions every morning. I want to get out of this situation. Yeah. So for me, my motivation was waking up every morning and looking at my studio apartment, looking at my top ramen on the counter, uh, looking at my ketchup packets, by the way, there's nothing wrong with top ramen or whatever you do. But yeah. to me, I knew that I, my life was more than eating top ramen for dinner every night. Okay. So I, I, I reached the situation, Jason, this was maybe in 20, maybe 2011 or 2012, about 10 years ago. And it was, you know, I was in my late twenties at the time and I just, you know, I did not like where I was at in life. And I don't think anything will motivate you more than being in a situation where you're uncomfortable and being in a situation where you're like, okay, I don't want to live this anymore. I need to get out of this. So, you know, when you ask that person who's trying to lose weight or that person who's trying to get up early to do this or to do that, you have to ask that person, what is it that they're trying to escape? What is it that they're trying to get away from? For, the, for example, a person is trying to lose weight. Maybe it's a health reason. They're trying to lose weight because they want to be healthier or they want to lose weight because they want to physically look better or they want to lose weight because they feel better about themselves and that boosts their self-esteem. Whatever it is, you have to find a reason why. And that's where passion comes from. Passion comes from having a reason to do something. Otherwise, like, you know, we just saw the NBA finals um, and I apologize to the Suns fans, but yes, the Bucks won in six. Now, when you listen to people like Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, Giannis Antetokounmpo, their passion to get up every morning was to win that ring, was to win a championship, a Larry O'Brien trophy. That's what got them out of bed every morning. Kobe Bryant, same thing, God, God rest his soul. There has to be something that you're chasing or something that you want to get away from. That's where the passion comes from. Otherwise, you're not going to have passion to get up every morning. Yep. And another thing I just want to say too, real quick, Jason, in regards to receiving all the rejections and stuff, people have to understand that life is a numbers game. You're not always going to score on your first shot. You're not always going to hit a home run. at your first at bat. Yeah. You're not always going to throw a touchdown on your first pass. You're going to fail. Life is about failing. And, you know, I felt the thing with me, Jason, I probably failed more than anyone else in this world. I've been rejected more than anyone else in this world. I'm telling you, even as a kid, you know, I remember my first crush in the fifth grade, I went up and tried to ask, talk to her. And she was like, no, she wasn't feeling me. She liked the other guy in our class who was the jock. That was hard rejection, but it's a numbers game. Yeah. The more you keep going as a man, the more you ask a woman out or ask other women out, it'll, well, you don't want to be creepy, but you know, at the end of the day, everything is a numbers game. And yeah. as long as you have that will determination and drive, Yes. And Something no, is going to happen. <laughs> it, it is inevitably. And, and whatever does happen, you're going to learn from it. But you, you hit it before. You, you got to know your why. You, you got to be passionate. Right. Because if, who, who cares? It's like why a lot of times people this, we, this is another segue on dating. I, I, I have a, a I would say a good dozen uh, women and men that I work with on relationships. And I got into this field because I've, I've had some amazing relationships. I've had some horrible ones, right? And it took me to a destination to have the most amazing relationship that I have with my partner right now. She's the most amazing human in every way, shape, or form. But here's, here's, here's the deal. A lot of times people, when it comes to dating or even fitness, but specifically dating, they have a list. And it's okay to have a list. They have to look like this. They have to have this, this, and that. They have all these check marks. But they're so surface that they're not going to, they're not asking themselves, am I going to be happy doing this? They're not reading what I call the fine print. Do they have good morals? Do they come from a good family? 
Do they care about me as much as they care about themselves as their other half? Are they in it for the right reasons? Are they with me for me or my money, my fame? The list goes on. Isn't that funny? So to add to all the value that you said, your why, your passion, your conviction, ask yourself, can you see yourself doing right what you want to do for the rest of your life, which is why I became a lifestyle coach. I don't teach people to go on crazy diets to attain a look. And like I tell them, go find a bodybuilding coach for that, right? You have an exhibition, you have whatever, right? But if you want to maintain an awesome lifestyle, you have to be realistic and ask yourself, can I do this? Same thing with you. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're working crazy hours. Am I right? Okay. Absolutely. I, I got off at 2 a.m. last night. <laughs> okay. Just, just tell me real quick. What are your hours? So then we can ask the audience, would you, would you do it, right? How, what, how many hours and what hours, what's your schedule? You know, it's interesting you say that. I, 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 the schedule all depends. So for the last year, I was actually on our morning show. So if you know anything about being on a morning show on, you know, broadcast news, you're up early. So I was up at 2 a.m. every morning and I, I was at work by 3 a.m., Wow. And, you know, I would get off in between maybe 12 and one each day. Um, and then, of course, I would come home and do schoolwork because I'm uh, in grad school right now as well, which is a whole right. other thing. As of maybe about a month ago, my schedule was switched uh, because I went from the morning show to now being our sports anchor. So now I work in the evening. So I'll come into work at around 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon, and then I'll be there you know, some days I'll leave at midnight, some days I'll leave at one or two in the morning. So it's just, it's, it's a, it's, it, and then also there's certain days if I'm covering events, like for example, we just had the celebrity golf tournament in Tahoe. I was off the night before that at like 12 or 1 a.m. And then I had to be back at the station at 6 a.m. to go to Tahoe to cover that event. So depending on what I'm covering, it can be a, you know, if it's the Super Bowl or training camp or what have you, the hours, you know, the event dictates the hours. So yep. it's kind of all over the place right now. Yeah. And it's like that saying, more money, more problems, more power, right? More responsibility. Superman didn't just become Superman by mistake. He became it. He had a choice, right? We all can and we all have superpowers within ourselves, right? We all have the cape. It's our choice to put it on once we achieve it. Like I tell people, anyone can achieve things if they really put their mind to it. The hardest obstacle is maintaining, right? You got, you got to where you got to where you got. But if Kevin does not stay consistent, persistent, and ambitious, you can't let it get to your head, right? Uh, I just want to say to anyone that's watching or listening, make sure you follow Kevin. And I'm going to tell you why. He just said something that just made my hair stick up. He's working these crazy hours. He's doing an amazing job of what he does, but he is in grad school. Ladies and gentlemen, get off your lazy ass. And I mean it. Get off your lazy ass. And when you're saying, oh, but, you know, I have to take Theodore to the to the laundromat and then I have to take her to school. And the... it's excuses. I get it. You're busy. I'm busy. Kevin's busy. But for the love of God, you want it. Make sure you work for it because you know what? You can have anything in life. Now give it up for Kevin. Ooh, ooh. Give it up for me for being your cheerleader. Jesus. I was about to say, Jason, I, I just need you to come around and, and have your pom-poms around me all the time and cheer me on like that. That, 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 that That's what I need in my it, life. It, don't stop. Get it. For, forget Alexa. I'll just be like, Jason, give me motivation. Jason, give me inspiration. You know, Jason, toot uh, my own horn. That, um, that will know. happen. That will happen. <laughs> No, it's, it's interesting. You know, it, it's interesting that you say that I was, uh, you know, I was, I was going to say something too. that is, you know, I think a lot of times in life, people focus on what they don't have. For example, I want, I wanted to be an athlete growing up, but I wasn't blessed with the athletic ability of LeBron James. You know, I, I wasn't blessed with the athleticism as Randy Moss or some of these other, you know, Hall of Fame, future Hall of Fame uh, athletes. So I think we, 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 we tend to focus on what it is that we want and we don't have instead of what it is that we have 
and may not necessarily need to want for it. And I think that we all, I, I truly believe that everyone is created in the image of God. We all have traits, blessings, talents, and things. Now, some other people's talents may be a little more visual. You know, if you're Mariah Carey or, you know, uh, whatever, you know, but at the end of the day, we all have something that we can offer the world. And your talent may not be as grand as a LeBron or a Brad Pitt or, you know, a Tiger or any of these other just, you know, freakish type um, um, celebrities that we see or athletes that we see with these freakish gifts. But at the end of the day, focus on what it is that you do have. And when you focus on what it is that you do have, then you can hone that and you can amplify that and you can eventually make that become something special. Yep. And it's something we all do. We, you know, we look at other people and one of my favorite quotes is comparison is the thief of joy. Whenever you compare yourself to somebody else, you're going to look at what they have and what you lack. And it's, it's common. We all do that. But at the end of the day, you need to look at what you have and what they lack. Yeah. And I think that's what really will uh, change your mindset and have, you know, put you on the road of prosperity and being able to manifest your true passion and uh, your gifts. A hundred percent. And or, or or take your negative into a positive. Right. Maybe I'll never forget. And I've said this in many interviews. Uh, I was in Florida and it was after we shot all, uh, you know, I love New York, all the I love monies. And, and this is way before I did all the shows I've done to date. And I remember my mom finding all of the photos uh, of when I was super overweight and my mom's, and, you know, I was stuck in the moment. I was like, oh man, uh, you know, what am I going to do financially? Cause I was supposed to get my own show. There was a lot of things mentally and emotionally going. I was in a very crappy place. We'll leave it at that. And she's like, you know, you should, you know, maybe uplift people and let them know that, you know, you weren't this reality TV, awesome guy that you are now prior to you were this fat guy. I was like, yeah, right. They're going to judge me. They're going to, you know, whatever. Fast forward, how I got into the fitness side of things before I trained celebrities and what have you. Funny enough, I uploaded a few photos and it was the best decision I made because it inspired people, right? Kind of like what you just said, you know, like you had an inspiration, like I was broke. And uh, uh, look, before we leave today's episode, because we're about to wrap up and we might do a follow-up. And by the way, anyone watching, listening, if you want to follow up of this episode, part two, uh, please let me know. Correct me if I'm wrong. You suffered with depression about a year and a half ago. Am I right, brother? Absolutely. It was the one of the worst periods of my life. It's something that I had never experienced in my life. I mean, I, I've had disappointments in life. I've, I've experienced setbacks in life. Like I said earlier in this interview, I experienced a lot of rejection. But going to this deep pit of depression was the worst thing that I had ever experienced in my life. What was and it? the reason what was it? The reason I say that is, and I'm gonna answer that. You know, Jason, I knew something was wrong when. You know, most people have millions of reasons to live. So many reasons to live, they have to find a reason to die or leave the earth because they have so many good reasons to live. I knew something was wrong when I was waking up every day and I couldn't find a reason to live. I couldn't find a purpose. I could not, nothing seemed like it was worth being on this earth because so many things that happened in my life up to that point, I just was not happy with myself. I was not happy with where I was at and I was not happy with the person I had become at that moment. So it was difficult for me to even look at myself in the mirror. So you have all of these things going through your head and I just felt it, it was so difficult because I couldn't get out of bed certain days. I just wanted to lay there. I just wanted to stay asleep. Because that was the only time I had peace was when I was unconscious, when I was sleeping. I was like, okay, that, that's where I'm at peace. When I wake up into the real world, I knew there was a problem. So Jason, I knew I had to see a therapist. There was one day I, I, I was having a dream and then I woke up. And you know, a lot of times when you're having a dream, especially if it's a nightmare, when you wake up, there's this sense of peace, like, okay, I'm back in reality. When I woke up, I wanted to go back to sleep because I did not like my reality. 
it felt like I was coming from a dream into a nightmare when I woke up and I was like, okay. So I sought therapy. I went to see a therapist for a while. And I just want to say this too. I think that I'm glad that in recent months and years, mental health has become something that we're a lot more aware of. And it's become something that is not as taboo as it once was. Um, you know, years ago, decades ago, if you were experiencing mental health issues, people looked at you as crazy or insane. Mm -hmm. Um, now I love the fact that it's for the most part universally accepted because I think there's a lot of people who suffer from mental health and a lot of people who need help. So I went to see a therapist and I just tried different things. And Jason, I'm not going to sit here and talk like I have it all figured out and I have it together. I still have, I still struggle from, from, from bouts of depression and, and mental health and stuff, but I just, I've just learned how to deal with it. Whereas when it happened to me a few years ago, it was un, uncharted territory. You know, I had never been there before. If, you, if you've never been swimming before and you don't have a life jacket, then you don't know how to handle that water. And I think that was me when I was in that experience. I didn't have a life jacket. I didn't know how to survive. Sure. So uh, fortunately, I, I found help in avenues. But, you know, as with anything in life, you know, there's seasons and nothing, is, nothing lasts forever. Nothing is permanent. Except love and cheering from Jason Rizal. That that that's, goes on the rest of the That's right, life. baby. That's right. So let, let me ask you real quick. Uh, God, it feels like we're going to probably have to do a follow-up on this. But one of the biggest uh, things that I like uh, that I tell a lot of my clients and myself, which is a well-known quote for many, 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 many years, is when you're living in depression, like I said earlier, you're living in the past, right? When you're living in anxiety, you're zoomed in into the future, Right. So let me ask you, because I've dealt with depression and anxiety, X, Y, Z, and I still have bouts, but I don't call it anxiety. I, I call it hyper happy. Why do I call it hyper happy? Because I'm anticipating the future. Oh my God, what can happen, right? Uh, another famous quote is uh, that I have it on my wall. It says, uh, worrying is like waiting for debt that may never come, right? And isn't it interesting? We're anticipating what can go right sometimes or wrong. You go on a date or, you know, well, I get on the show. But interesting enough for me, right, and a lot of my clients, depression is more so they had a memory, they had a thought, whether say it was a bully at one point that they had or say uh, when, when they were living, uh, I don't know, in a broken down home, uh, abusive mental parents, the list goes on. What would you say your type of depression was? In other words, what, what clicked in your mind that, that made you feel that way that you didn't want to get out of bed? What specific thought or two did you have? You know, I, I think it was a, a, a cultivation of a lot of thoughts that had uh, got to that point. It wasn't, it, it wasn't one specific thing that kind of triggered everything. Um, I would say if there was one thing that kind of started the downfall, uh, I was in a relationship, uh, this was a few years ago, and when that came to an end, that's really kind of where it started, where everything just kind of started spiral, spiraling uh -huh. out of control. And let, me, let me guess, and, and, and I know it's not good to assume, she cut ties with you or no? You're good. She did. She did. Yeah. And was there a lot of unanswered questions with that? ending of ties? Well, there was a lot of, there were some unanswered questions, but ultimately I felt guilty about everything that happened. And I felt it was my fault that I ended up in this situation. And because I kept pointing the finger at myself, that's what made myself feel like I was not worthy. And, you know, there was something wrong. And, 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 and you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I think it's good to hold ourselves accountable. And, you know, to, 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 to hold ourselves responsible for things that we do. And I just realized that, you know, I was not perfect in that relationship. And I, you know, there were things that I did not do as good as I could have. And, you know, you realize that, okay, well, you know, this is an opportunity for growth. This is an opportunity to look and say, okay, you were not at your best. Sure. But how can you take the situation and learn from it, grow from it, develop from it, improve from it. And I think that's when I kind of started getting on this whole self-development thing and inspiring others and things of that sort. Cause I know how it feels to be at rock bottom and to feel like you, you don't have anything to offer anything. You're not enough. You're not good enough. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Absolutely. And 
And unfortunately, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to do a follow up. Uh, yeah. We can do a relationship topic. Um, oh, man, I need to know everything that you know about that, because, you know, apparently that's not a good that's not one of my good uh, avenues is relationships. Oh, are you kidding me? I am still the number one student. I have mentors. I'm constantly learning what I learn. I teach others. It's and I constantly evolve like yourself and I constantly reinvest uh, in myself. And, and I say that because uh, you have to, you have to love yourself just like you love yourself, Kevin, but correct me if I'm wrong. So we can end uh, this portion of it. Cause you have, you have my wheels turning your past partner. Didn't give you the opportunity um, to make things better. It was like an instant boom. You've done a lot of things, Kevin. It's time for you to say, it's time for me to say bye. Like, did they want to stick around for you to improve? Or was it just, uh, uh, you, it came out of nowhere. One day it's like, look, I've realized, Kevin, this is wrong. This is wrong. It's, I'm gone. Is that how, tell me how it went, how it ended. You know, I, 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 I <laughs> don't want to get too personal with it. But yes, to, to a certain extent, did I have an opportunity to redeem myself or an opportunity to showcase growth improvement no i did not it, it was it was kind of it, 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 you know it was to the point where she just felt it was best to um uh, go in the other direction and, and i respect that like i said like you know i i totally respect that i totally understand what she was going through and, and it was there was a lot of other factors that went into it because it was a long distance relationship too and as we know long distance relationships are not easy no. you know any given thing could you know, magnify something that's a small thing could be magnified when it's long distance. Yep. So, you know, of course there were other factors in it as well, but no, I have nothing but respect, admiration, and love for this person. And, you know, I thank them for the, the, the opportunity that they gave me with them because I learned a lot about myself and I feel that I've really grown and improved a lot. And they're, yeah. they're an incredible person. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's a beauty, you know, it's funny. I don't have any negative uh, uh, thoughts uh, towards any, whether it's friends in the past, uh, ex-girlfriends, all that stuff. They, failures, like you said, it, I'm so thankful, right? It's such a beautiful thing when you don't have to live your life with uh, uh, the animosity, right? And like I tell people all the time, look, people that are pointing the finger at you most of the time, and mind you, like you did it, I did it. I was living off of ego at times. And it wasn't until I went like this with my finger and I started pointing right here. I was like, wait a minute. Am I the reason half of these issues are occurring? Yeah, it was me. I messed up. I messed up. And just like you messed up, but instead of living in doubt, God, I wish me and you were talking back then. We could have helped each other out, right? Um, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> oh, man, I've cried rivers. I Oh, man, I've had sadness. But you know what? Again, like we said, thankful for all the stuff we've been through and the new partner, the new friends in your life are going to appreciate you so much more, so much more, you know, because they're saying, wow, you know what? This man is a real man. And maybe you went through a phase that you were probably still a great person, just like I was a great person when I dated people seven years ago, as an example. But I wasn't as seasoned as I would call it, an experience on, on, hey, it's not just all about Jason, put yourself in someone else's shoes, right? Right. You can give someone a compliment, but they may not be the, it may not be the best compliment because they're insecure, right? Hey, you know what? If you love them, you gotta, you gotta show them extra love. That's just what it is. You may get annoyed in the process, but if they're there for you, they'll ride or die for you. They, 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 they they have their heart invested in you. That's what true love is. And nowadays in today's society, it is so hard to find good people. And you know this, right? It is. And um, you it know, is. Uh, 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 it, it's, a, it's a blessing in disguise when you do. So anyone that's watching or listening, if you're a true big heart person, me and Kevin send you mucho, mucho amor. Sí, mucho amor. Yo tenga, yo tengo mucho amor para ti. Eso me gusta, papi. Dale. Listen. Suavemente. Oh, don't, even, don't get me started. I will start shaking and breaking, shaking and breaking. Everybody give it up for Kevin, John, 
dude, thank you for being not only an awesome guest, me and you have been friends since 2007. We may not talk for five years on out, but we pick up just like if it was yesterday. If you guys really enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions for me and Kevin, please take a screenshot of this episode. Tag us on IG, on Twitter, or on Facebook. Most importantly, keep it caliente and what, what, what? Stay inspired, Kevin. Dude, I love you, brother. You rock. Well, thank you as well, Jason. And real quick for a wrap up, I just want to tell you, like you said, we've been friends for a long time. As you know, I'm not friends with many people from my reality shows, not because I just like them, but you know, people grow and they go just separate ways. I mean, I welcome all of them. They were all cool people, but Jason, you know, you were one of the few guys that I stayed in contact with. And I think it's just because of your authenticity, uh, the fact that you're genuine and uh, you know, you're just a good person. So I just want to thank you for uh, being consistent throughout all these years, growing your brand, becoming the person that you are. You're a real solid dude, a great dude. And uh, it's no secret why we maintain a friendship throughout all these years. So I love you, brother. Thanks so much, Kevin. We'll see you on the next one, hopefully for part two. Have the best day ever. I, I appreciate you. I look forward to that. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.